Welcome to Cherry Grove Baptist Church. This is Pastor Tim McCann, and our live broadcast will begin very shortly. Thanks for watching today, and we pray that you'll be blessed by the praiseful singing and benefited by the scriptural preaching of God's Word. Cherry Grove Baptist Church is located in the northwestern section of North Carolina. If you're ever in our area, we certainly would love to have you come visit with us. Our service times here at Cherry Grove Baptist Church are every Sunday morning at 9.45 for Sunday school, then 10.45 for the worship service. Every Sunday evening we begin at 6 p.m. and every Wednesday night we meet at 7 p.m. Thanks again today for watching our broadcast. God bless you is our prayer. Welcome to Cherry Grove Baptist Church. This is Pastor Tim McCann, and our live broadcast will begin very shortly. Thanks for watching today. All right, if you got your song book, turn to 346 in the red book, 346, and we will sing, I know my name is there. Do you know your name's there this morning? Amen. I'm glad you do. 346, appreciate you for being here this morning. Now your lungs are woken up, ain't they? And uh, you sing it out on verse number two, all right?
Sunday school on, and uh, and so you pray for Brother Beckham as he comes this morning and starts us out in Sunday school, and then we'll take a break here in a little bit, and uh, you can go smoke a cigarette and all that good stuff, and uh, no, nah, I'm just picking, and we'll come back in and sing a little bit, and, uh, and then we'll have some more preaching. Uh, happy mama. How many are y'all here because of your mama? All right, well, half of you still don't know how you got here, right? And uh, I promise you it's because your mama, all right? And uh, so you pray for Dr. Beckham as he comes, and he's going to uh, give us what the Lord's given him. This is we've took last week, all last week, and met and prayed at 7 o'clock each night. And, uh, and I expect God to see great things done. And, and I hope you've come with a heart open uh, to let God speak to you. We need revival. We need it. And uh, I was just telling Dr. Beckham, I made the statement that in the last days, uh, the Bible said they're going to heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And basically, in our terminology, they don't want to hear preaching no more. That's what that means. And, uh, but I'm glad we got a preacher here this morning, this week. And, uh, and he ain't going to be apologetic about what he preaches neither, all right? And uh, so I'm excited about it. Let's pray, all right? Our Father, we love you. Thank you again for this day. I pray you bless this time. Bless your word. Use it. And Lord, I pray you give us open ears, open hearts this morning. And Lord, I'm so thankful, Father, for this day, a special day, uh, Mother's Day. I'm, I'm thankful for a good, godly mother uh, that you put me in her life and allowed her to be my mother. And Lord, we're so thankful for that. And Lord, all these mothers that are here, that will be here, others that are with her mothers this morning, I pray you bless. Bless these preachers all across this county this morning as they stand to preach. And Lord, we know, we know there's going to be children there uh, sitting beside their mothers that normally are not there. And God, I pray the Holy Ghost of God would sweep across this county, this land today. And God, get a hold of hearts, save souls in these last days. We'll be sure to glorify you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Dr. Beckham, you come on. Brother. Thank you. Amen. I love you. Amen. Good to see you. Happy Mother's Day. And, um, you know, my mother has been in heaven a long time. I was 24 years old when she uh, went to heaven. And uh, I wish she would have went in a little different way. I uh, uh, did something I should not have done. Have you ever done that? Am I the only one? Okay. But... Um, uh, one day, one day, uh, I'll see her again. Amen. And um, good to see you. You, you are, are you okay? Uh, are you? Uh, some of you look a little sad. Uh, been, have you been sucking lemons? Uh, are you okay? Really? Are you okay? All right. You know, this is the day the Lord's made, and uh, we should be. We should be happy. Uh, not happy, but happy, happy. Maybe even happy, happy, happy. Are you happy, happy, happy? Amen. I hope you are. Well, I know Mother's Day. You know, I've been preaching now 55 years, and that's been quite a, quite a journey. You know, I, I really enjoy preaching. I hope you enjoy listening. Amen. And, uh, but God, God has really, really been, been good to this preacher down through the years. And, um, uh, you know, prayer, prayer has been a wonderful thing uh, to me for the last 21 years. Uh, I have made it a priority in my life. And uh, I used to say it was a priority in my life for many years. But I just played around, you know, just just played around. Uh, I thought I was spiritual because I was busy. 
And uh, you can be busy and not spiritual. And a lot of people mistakes being, being spiritual from being busy. But uh, I was a busy man. I, you know, uh, even as a young preacher, I, did, I was very, very busy. But I wasn't spiritual. And I wasn't spiritual because I didn't have a prayer closet. And I, I didn't walk with the Lord. And I didn't walk in the consciousness of the Lord. But as a young preacher, I, uh, on Mother's Day, Christmas, Easter, all those Sundays, I never, I was never one to preach a, a Christmas message just because it was Christmas. Uh, you know, or uh, a Thanksgiving message just because it was Thanksgiving, or a Mother's Day message just because it's Mother's Day. Every day should be Mother's Day. Every day should be, we should think about Christ and his birth and all that. And every day should, should be a thankful day. So I never got into that. You know, I just, uh, I just uh, uh, preached whatever the Lord told me to. Amen. And I think we, be, we are better off that way anyway, aren't we? Well, turn with me to Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6. I sure hope that you have a relationship with the Lord, and you have heard you have heard me say that uh, down through the years that I've been coming here. Um, uh, I, I'm glad the preacher said I, I, I'm not going to be apologizing for anything because you can't apologize for something God said. And, 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 you know, that's what I try to do anymore. I just try to say what he says. I can't go wrong there, can we? Mm -mm. Now, people in America doesn't want to hear what God wants to say. And, but, um, but I feel like I'm in, in good company this morning. Amen? And I feel like you all love the Word of God and, and uh, you love the doctrine of prayer. And I, uh, the prayer room was fairly full this morning, and uh, uh, that just excites me to walk into a prayer room that's almost full. Amen. And uh, and I know it could have been uh, we we had some more seats in there, but uh, it was it was good to hear to hear the men pray this morning and brother thank you for heading that up uh, now matthew chapter six and i want you to pray some of you asked me about my foot it's still on there still on my body and uh, it still hurts at times and uh so uh, i still have to use the cane not every day but uh from time to time and I, I think it's getting better because Cherry Grove's praying for me. Amen. And uh, I sure hope you are. I, I feel like you are. And, uh, and all the pats and all the hugs uh, sure makes me feel good to be here. Matthew chapter 6. Uh, I want to talk to you for a little while uh, on uh, what time, how much time do I have, preacher? 10.45. 10.45. All right. That's a a lot of time. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. Uh, have you ever heard of the term closet prayer? Now, you would be surprised that the people have been in church all their life that have never heard the term closet prayer. Now, they heard a prayer, of course, uh, in general. But uh, some people's never even heard of supplication. Some people's never heard of a private prayer, public, well, public prayer. Most of them have heard of that. But they have never heard of intercessory prayer. Um, but all of those are very important to you and me. And uh, we will never have revival in this country until we get back to practicing uh, the doctrine of prayer. Uh, we preach on the doctrine of sanctification, doctrine of, of God, the God, doctrine of Jesus Christ, doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, we, we ground our people in those doctrines, 
but the doctrine of prayer seems like it's, it's, a, it's just a forgotten doctrine anymore unless we, we get where we need, we need uh, someone that can do more than what we can do with our problems and then we want to pray. Amen. And we seek God's hand more than we do his face. And we need to get back to uh, not only seeking the hand of God, but we need to get back to seeking the face of God. Amen. Letting him know that we need him and love him and, and cherish him and, and want to walk with him. Amen. Uh, that, that, that's, that's very important. You can keep your seats. Uh, let me just read Matthew 6, 6. Jesus is talking here. And he says, but thou, that's you, that's me, amen? Uh, when, not if, not if, shouldn't be an if. Uh, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the do thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Father, I love you. I thank you for this opportunity to be back at Cherry Grove Baptist Church with my brothers and my sisters. And Lord, I just pray that I can be sensitive uh, to their needs this morning. I can be very loving, very caring, and Lord, as I have prayed many times, Lord, if I can't be those things, let me swallow my old pride and have a seat and allow Brother McCann to, to do the preaching or someone of his choice. But Lord, I want to be used today. I want to be used in this Sunday school time. And Lord, you, you can break revival loose right now revival can start right now in this in this sunday school hour and lord i sure pray there won't be any quenching done no grieving uh no hurting you but that we will open our hearts and our minds and our souls to you and lord that we will listen to your soft, tender, loving, gracious, merciful voice this morning. Sure love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. According to our text, God takes for granted that you and I should pray. Well, we might as well just get, get something straight right now, okay? Uh, let me ask you this. Let me just go ahead and kill the service, okay? Let me just go ahead and put everybody under conviction right now. Uh, how much have you prayed uh, this morning? How much have you prayed this week? Now, if you have not prayed everywhere, if you have not prayed always, if you have not prayed without ceasing, then you have not pleased God this week. You have not been biblical this week. Amen? Because that's the biblical definition of prayer. It's not pray when you feel like it. It's not go into your closet if you want to or if you have the time. Jesus said, that we need to have a prayer closet. And he said when you, do, when you do have one, you go in there, you shut the door, and you, you, you talk to the Father. But we don't just need to talk to him, we need to listen to him. Amen? Amen. We don't just go in there and give me, give me, give me, give me. We go in there, and sometimes we, it would be good if we just take about an hour or two, and just praise him. Amen? And uh, you say, well, I thought it was uh, confession first. Oh, no. We need to praise him first and then confess. Amen? And uh, I'm telling you, 
God is so good to us. Now let's look at this uh, doctrine of closet prayer this morning. And uh, are you okay with what I just said to you? Um, uh, praying always. I hear preachers all the time preach uh, on that. And I read books on prayer all the time. And they talk about prayer in general in that Luke passage. But they don't, they don't deal with the word always. And they don't deal with that word faint. It, it's as if uh, they just preach in general on prayer uh, in a very calm way. If you want to pray, you can pray. If you feel like praying, you can pray. Uh, and, and, you know, real gentle. But, uh, oh no, oh no. You're to pray always. Uh, you're to pray without ceasing. And you're, and you're not to get weary, and you're not to get upset with God if he doesn't answer your prayer about the minute. We want God to answer our prayer, I mean, the very second after we ask him for something. But we, 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 don't, we shouldn't be that way. It may not be God's will to give it to you right then. Uh, we may not be able to handle what we ask for right then. Amen. There's a lot of things I prayed for I'm glad I didn't get. Amen. Yeah, through my, my life. And uh, maybe, how many of you can testify of that? I'm telling you. Um, and, um, but let's, let's look. I want to give you some examples of men that, that uh, and, and a lady that, uh, that had a prayer closet. Because some, some people just don't, just don't realize that the great men of God in the Bible, they were men that had closets of prayer. Amen? And I'll tell you something else. In history, every great preacher was a praying man. I'll tell you something else. Every great person that has ever been used of God was a prayer warrior. Amen? Because if they were not, God would not bless them. Amen. Amen. And, and, and let's look at this first one. Exodus chapter 34 verse 28. Uh, Moses was alone uh, in the mount with God for 40 days, 40 nights. He said, good night, Brother Beckham. Well, he just practiced praying always. <laughs> and... Um, and, and I want you to look at this text because sometimes when I read this text, I look at people and they look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Amen? And, 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 and they say, oh no, Brother Peckham, you don't expect, you don't expect us to pray. I don't expect you to, to, to do anything, but God does. And really I do too if you're a Christian. You might just be a believer. You may not be a Christian. Amen. There's a difference in a believer and a Christian. Woo. How about that one? Huh? There's a difference. You can be saved and still not be right with God. Amen. Okay. Uh, boy, oh, boy. Isn't that good? Yeah. Exodus 34, 28. And he was there with the Lord 40 days. Forty nights, uh huh. He didn't neither eat bread or drink water, and he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now, that's amazing, isn't it? Forty days, forty nights. He didn't drink water, or he didn't eat. Now, have you ever seen a program on television that, that underneath or the announcer will say, do not try this at home? Have you ever seen a program like that? Well, do not try this at home. Now, you can fast for 40 days without food, but don't you try to go 40 days without water. Now, that I have always heard all my life that if you go seven days without water, you'll die. Now, but 
my older brother, before he died, he went eight days. Eight days. And then the Lord took him home. But folks, Moses did this for 40 days, but he didn't just do it for 40 days. When I was writing the textbook on prayer, I found out that Moses did it for 80 days. It was a supernatural fast. Uh, it wasn't one of these fleshly things. Amen. Trying to be a super duper duper. See, I tell folks I'm not even a duper. I, uh, I, I want to be a super duper, but I'm going to be a super duper when I get to heaven. I'm going to just be a duper down here. Just one that trying, trying to do and please God. Amen. But I have learned that I cannot please God unless I do what God tells me to do. Amen. And uh, this 40 days, this 40 nights, uh, praying and fasting. Now, I, 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 I deal with this fasting stuff all the time. And I look at people as I'm talking, and they look at me like, like a calf looking at a new gate. They just look at me like, well, what in the world is he talking about? I've never even heard of such. Well, I uh, see, you know why you have so much trouble with the devil? How many of you ever have trouble with the devil? The rest of you can repent later for lying. Amen. We all have trouble with the devil. Don't we? Okay, let me ask that again. How many of us have ever had trouble with the devil? Okay, now, now we can have church. Amen. You're being honest. We have to be honest, folks. And uh, 40 days, 40 nights, then 40 more days, and 40 more nights. No wonder God used Moses like he did. Amen. Yeah. He told the apostles, this fasting thing, let me get back to that. Um, and since we're dealing with Moses here, that Jesus told the disciples, uh, he said, see that kind right there talking about a bunch of demons. Yeah, Brother Beckham believes in demons. I believe in the devil. I believe in spiritual warfare. Yeah, I'm one of those narrow-minded preachers that believes the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And uh, some of my brethren don't believe it, and, and they, they, they can be wrong if they want to be. Amen. Yeah. Because it's in the Bible, preacher. It's in the Bible. Uh, and all the way to get victory. And see, Moses had a task to do. He had to lead uh, over a million people out of Egypt. Amen. Uh, I, let me tell you, he had a task to do. And uh, he knew that, that the devil was going to fight him. Pharaoh was going to fight him. Everybody, And even the people he was leading out of Egypt was going to fight him. He knew that. So you know what he did? He put a little bit of uh, fasting in there that put a little bit of power to his prayers. Amen. Do you want to be powerful in your prayer life? Mix fasting. Jesus says, see that kind right there, guys? And they looked and saw that kind. He said, the only way you're going to get victory over that kind is through prayer and fasting. Amen. It may be, you say, well, I, 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 this week, Brother Beckham, been rough. Have, have you, uh, this coming week, don't, do you want another rough week? No. So uh, add a little bit of fasting to your prayer life. And let's see what happens. And then, so Moses, Moses uh, had his prayer closet. And then I want you to notice Abraham prayed along to God about Sodom's sin and destruction in Genesis 18, 22, to verse 32. And then in Genesis 21 and verse 33, we see Abraham uh, in his prayer closet. Now, he was in there as an intercessor uh, praying for the sins of Sodom. People, people in America, I hear every week of my life, people say, boy, I wish America, uh, I wish America would return back to God. Have you asked, have you asked God to uh, convict America? Have you asked God to help America? Ha huh? Have you? Uh, if you haven't, then you can't expect God to, an uh, to answer that for you. Amen? 
Hello? Okay. Uh, Genesis 21, Abraham, a great man of God, a great intercessor. Um, he planted a grove in verse 33 of Genesis 21. Uh, I hope you're following along with me. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. You know, he had a little prayer. He had a, a, a closet, but it was in a little garden. Someone said, uh, can I have a prayer closet? You can have one anywhere you want. If you like flowers, just go out in your little flower garden and sit down and pray to God. Amen? Uh, Moses was on the mountain. There's a lot of mountains around here. Amen? Uh, find you a mountain. Find you a rock up on top of the mountain. Go to that rock. Sit down, lay down, whatever you want to do, and pray. Amen? It, it, it's everywhere. That's what I'm trying to show you. It could be anywhere. A closet can be anywhere. And then uh, I want you to look at Isaac in Genesis 24, 63. Isaac, great man of God, used greatly. Uh, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at evening tide, and uh, he went out there in the field to meditate. Wow. I like to go back home uh, in the Georgia uh, fields uh, when they plow up the peanuts and the soybeans and they start planting them again. The field smells so wonderful. Have you ever went into a flesh, freshly plowed up field? Oh, my Oh, my, it smells wonderful, just smelling God. Amen. And um, it gets you in the spirit of wanting to meditate on the good things of the Lord. And, and if you don't know this, if you get down in the dumps you, and you find you a little hole somewhere and get along with God and start meditating on Him and start meditating on what He has done for you since you have been in His family, forgive you of all your iniquities, oh my soul. That's enough right there to shout and run down the aisles, amen. And, uh, and without even a banjo a playing, how about that? Uh, don't even need a piano playing for Brother Beckham to get excited. I get excited over this closet thing. I get excited about going in there with God and being with God, just being with God and meditating upon God and letting God uh, talk to me and let my ears listen to Him. That's excitement. Amen? I don't need fleshly things to make. Now, I love those things. I love a banjo. I love a guitar, a mandolin. I, I even like a drum once in a while. Whoa. Hmm. Do you? Do you like that? Yeah. yeah, I do once in a while. Amen. Unless they go crazy, but, but you know, just keeping the... Yeah, I like it. And, and then look in Genesis 20, 30, 32, verse 24. Are you okay? Everybody okay? All right. Get Genesis 32, verse 24 down to verse 28. You find Jacob. I don't know about you, but I like Jacob. I like all these men. But Jacob, Jacob is an amazing man to me. And Jacob was left alone. You know, I find this quite often in these uh, verses, uh, alone with God, alone, alone with God. I like that. It would help us to leave our burdens out of the closet. Just getting there alone with God. Amen. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevaileth, prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, 
and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto me, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. That's a wonderful story. Amen. Amen. You know, it would, it would do us good to just go, go in the prayer closet sometime and just kneel, whatever you want, whatever posture you want to use while you're talking to God, and, and just say, Lord, I'm here. To, I, am, I am here until, until I get blessed. I'm here. If it takes all day, if it takes two days, three days, for me to get right with you, I'm going to stay here. And Lord, I'm not just here to talk to you. I'm here to listen now. You got my attention. Amen. We, 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 we go, those of us that have these prayer closets, sometimes we go in, we leave the door open. And all the attractions of the world and all the problems just sneaks in there with us. Amen. And, and then when we get in there, we, we think, oh, my soul, I got, I got, I got a four o'clock appointment. Oh, my, I got two minutes. Lord, you understand, don't you? I, I have to take care of my family. You understand that, don't you? And we run out the door. These men didn't do that. Prayer, walking with God, serving God was a serious thing with Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Now, let me ask you, is it serious with you? I know, I know it's Sunday and I know it's Mother's Day and all that. But, but, but listen, is, 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 is coming to church, serving God, praying in the prayer closet, having a walk with God, having a relationship with God, is that a serious thing for you? Or is it just, oh well. Now listen, is, if revival is going to come to America, it's going to come through the local church. God uses the local church. Amen. You're looking at a preacher believes in the local church doctrine. Amen. And uh, I believe what God's going to do, he's going to do through the local church people. Amen. Yes, sir. And, 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 and if the local church is just playing around, going through the motions and... and um, if that's, all, if that's all you're doing, uh, we, we're not going to have revival. We're not going to have, we're going to have a good, good meeting. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I, can I say this? Can I just be me again? Uh, listen, uh, I'm so tired. Of, of having meetings. I'm so tired of seeing people go through motions and, and just, just, there's nothing to it, just going through it, just to be going through it. Uh, I'm so tired of that. Are you tired of that kind of stuff? How many of you really want to see revival and don't mind raising your hand? Amen. Uh, are you willing to do what it takes today to have revival? Uh, because, see, God, God you, you, we got to get back doing the things that the Bible says to do. It's not optional. 
This stuff is not, well, Brother Beckham, I just don't feel like I can, I can, uh, you're fanatical, you're crazy. Uh, uh, all you want to do is travel over the country and preach this, this prayer stuff. Uh, and, you know, I'm just not there. Well, you need to get there. We all need to get there. If you, if that, if, if I just described you, you need to get there. And you need to get there quick. Because our country's going to hell quickly. Amen. And, uh, oh. Well, let's see. How much time do I have? Okay. Still got a little. Amen. Look in Psalms 55, verse 16. Psalms 55, verse 16, 17. Are you enjoying this? Amen. Amen. We see David in his prayer closet. David said, As for me, I will call upon God, and, he, and the Lord shall save me. Amen. Amen. As for me, how many of you would, would be willing to say this morning, as for me, I am going to call upon the name of the Lord. As for me, I'm going to pray everywhere. Now some of you are looking at me kind of odd. Uh, I love you. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, so you're looking at me kind of odd because... You, you, you're, you're wondering, what's the big deal, Brother Beckham? The big deal is, if we know to do this and we don't, it's sin. That's the big deal. And, and if your church is in sin, he's going to spank you. He's blessed you. Amen? He has blessed you. You can look around. This is a blessing. Amen? He has really blessed you. You have the Spirit here. He has blessed you. But let me tell you, sin can drive the Spirit out the back door. Uh, and and, and um, this, this is serious stuff. Uh, whether you think it is or not, it, it's serious. And David says here, As for me, I'm going to call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. And then he said, evening, morning, and at noon will I pray and cry aloud. And, and I like what he says here. Uh, can you say what David is saying? David is saying, I'm going to cry out to the Lord, and he shall hear my voice. Can you say that this morning? Can you say, Brother Beckham, I can pray and I can get my prayers answered. Because I have confidence in my Father. Amen. He shall hear me. He is going to hear me. He is going to answer my prayers. And see, if you can't pray with that kind of confidence, there must be something down in here. And that's why we have revival meetings. But you know, it dawned on me, every day should be, we should be in revival. Someone told me the other a couple years ago, I was preaching in a in a, a, a world renowned church, and um, and someone said to me, "Brother Beckham, do you know that you are the first man that has ever preached a revival in that church?" said no way I can name I can name 30 40 people that has preached there and no not not for a revival you can't you're the first one I said that's not right And if I mention it, everyone in here would know it, 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 it's that well known. 
But you know what the pastor said? I asked someone, I asked someone on staff about that, and, and they said, well, this is what pastor so-and-so meant. He's always taught us that we were in revival every day because we had a vision for the mission field. We won thousands of people to the Lord per week. Um, our Sunday services were packed. People were being saved, baptized every Sunday for years. That's what pastor so-and-so meant when he said, we don't need an evangelist to come in to preach a meeting that we will call revival because we are in this church is in revival all the time. I thought, wow. If that's so, that's wonderful. Amen? Yeah. I, wouldn't that be good that you could say that, that, that you're having revival every day? Every day? Cherry Grove Baptist Church is, is in revival, calling one another. We just won one, one more to the Lord. So-and-so just got right with God. Amen? That will bring worldwide revival. When churches, not just pastors, not just deacons, not just the, the elite of the elite in the church, but every member on the pews, on the church roll, everybody has a closet they go into on a daily basis. They stay clean. They say they stay sanctified, mortified. They stay dead to the world and they are used of God every day. Amen. That would bring revive. Oh boy. I get excited even thinking about that. Amen. And uh, I, I, I've seen touches of that uh, in the last 21 years. Seven weeks here, nine weeks there, six weeks and all this stuff. But um, um, that's still not what we need. We need daily revival. And the way you can have that is to have your prayer closet. No prayer closet, no revival on a daily basis. Amen? Now, look in Daniel. Oh, boy, I got five minutes. So that means I got actually three minutes. Because the preacher said be done... 9.45, so I got to quit 9.42 to be obedient to the preacher. See? I'm under his authority, by the way. Amen? I take this local church stuff serious. Let me read this one to you. Daniel. Just like David, praying three times a day. And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees, just a posture, uh, three times a day and prayed. He knelt and he prayed. And then he gave thanks before his God. That's praise. And he did as he did aforetime. He was accustomed, he was, he, Daniel accustomed himself to closet prayer. And I'm going to drive a little peg right there, okay? Uh, we'll pick it up sometime or the other. Uh, Father, I, I love you. Thank you for closet prayer. Thank you, Lord, for just that relationship that we have with you. It's wonderful. Thank you. And Lord, I pray that you will uh, just uh, pull at our heartstrings today, this Mother's Day, 
uh, help us, Lord, to celebrate with our, with our mothers, uh, our wives. And Lord, I, I just pray that you will give all of them a wonderful, wonderful day. Be with the services. Pray that souls will be saved. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. This is Pastor Tim McCann. I want to take this time and say thank you for listening to today's broadcast and also tell you a little bit more about our church. Our service times here at Cherry Grove Baptist Church are every Sunday morning at 945 for Sunday school and then 1045 for the worship service. Every Sunday evening we gather at 6 p.m. and every Wednesday evening we gather at 7 p.m. Cherry Grove Baptist Church has a strong desire to reach the world with the gospel. And if you've heard something today in today's message and it has you wondering where you would spend eternity, we ask you to please contact us through our website, through email, or even by phone at 336-921-4224. We would love to help you understand how you can receive Christ and He can give you the peace that passes all understanding. And again, we want to say thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and may God bless you as our prayer.